Welcome to Graphic Hunt YouTube channel. Here, in this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a colorized grid design on a plain photograph using Photoshop's guides and rulers to set up the initial spacing. Then a couple of rarely used selection tools to convert the guides into an actual grid. We'll learn how to easily select random squares in the grid and colorize them with adjustment layers and blend modes. Finally, how to color and adjust the appearance of the grid itself. I'll be using Photoshop CS6 throughout the tutorial, but any recent version will work. First, I'll create a new document for the grid by going up to the File menu in the menu bar along the top of the screen and choose New. This opens Photoshop's New Document dialog box. I'm going to create a square-shaped document by entering 1000 pixels for both the width and height. Of course, you can enter whatever dimensions you need, but the effect tends to work best if you stick to a square shape. For this tutorial, I'll leave the resolution value set to 72 pixels per inch, which is fine if you're creating this effect for the web. If you're planning on printing the final result, you'll have to create a larger document and set your resolution to 240 pixels per inch or higher. Click OK when done to close out the dialog box. The new document will appear on your screen. Go up to the view menu at the top of the screen and choose rulers, or press Ctrl plus R in Windows or Command plus R in Macintosh to quickly turn the rulers on, with the keyboard shortcut. This displays Photoshop's rulers along the top and left of the document. Depending on what measurement type your rulers are set to in Photoshop's preferences, they're probably displaying either pixels or inches. Move your mouse cursor into the rulers, either along the top or the left, then right mouse button click in Windows or Control plus click in Macintosh inside the rulers and choose percent from the list. You'll see the rulers change to percentage increments. The reason we turned the rulers on was so that we could easily add equally spaced guides to our document, which will then become our grid lines. Let's add vertical guides first. Click inside the ruler along the left of the document, and with your mouse button held down, drag out the first guide. Use the top ruler to place the guide at the 10% mark and release your mouse button to place the guide. Do the same thing to add a guide at each 10%, 20%, 30%, 40% increments and so on. All the way up to the 90% mark. document should now appear divided into 10 equally spaced vertical columns. Next, use the same steps to add horizontal guides. Click inside the top ruler and with your mouse button held down, drag out a horizontal guide. Use the left ruler to place the guide at the 10% mark. Continue dragging out horizontal guides at 10%, 20%, 30%, 40% increments just like before all of the way down to the 90% mark. When you're finished, you should have the same number of horizontal and vertical guides dividing the document up into a grid of squares. With the guides in place, go again to the View menu and select Rulers or press Ctrl plus R in Windows or Command plus R in Mac on your keyboard to hide the rulers, since we no longer need them. Hold down your Alt in Windows or Option key in Mac and click on the new layer icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. Normally, Photoshop would just go ahead and add a new blank layer, but by holding down Alt or Option when clicking the new layer icon, 
we instruct Photoshop to first pop open the new layer dialog box, which gives us the chance to name the new layer before it's added. Name the layer grid, then click OK. The new blank layer appears in the layers panel above the background layer. We have divided our document up into a grid using Photoshop's guides, but the guides are just for visual reference. They won't be of any real use to us unless we somehow convert them into an actual pixel-based grid, and we can do that easily using a couple of Photoshop's rarely used selection tools, that is the single row and single column marquee tools. Click on the rectangular marquee tool near the top of the tools panel and hold your mouse button down for a second or two until a small flyout menu appears showing you the other tools nested in behind in, then choose the single row marquee tool from the list. As its name implies, the single row marquee tool will select a single horizontal row of pixels in the document. To use the tool. We just need to click anywhere in the document and Photoshop will automatically select the pixel we clicked on, plus every other pixel in that row from left to right. We are going to use the tool to convert the horizontal grid lines into a series of selection outlines. First, move your cursor directly over the top horizontal grid line which is the one you placed at the 10% mark and click. You'll see a one pixel thick selection outline appear along the guide. Hold down your shift key and click on the next horizontal guide below it. This will add a second selection outline to the document. Continue holding down your shift key and clicking on all the horizontal guides until a selection outline appears along each of them. You should see 9 selection outline rows in total. Make sure you keep your shift key held down as you click on each new guide, otherwise you'll just replace the previous selection outline with the new one. We need to do the same thing now with the vertical guides, which means we need to switch to the single column marquee tool. Click on the single row marquee tool in the tools panel which will appear where the rectangular marquee tool icon appeared earlier and hold your mouse button down until the flyout menu appears, then choose the single column marquee tool from the list. We want our vertical selection outlines to be added to the horizontal selection outlines we already have, so once again hold down your shift key. Then click on each of the vertical guides in the document until they're all selected. When you're done, you should have selection outlines along every guide, horizontally and vertically. Now, go up to the edit menu at the top of the screen and choose fill. When the fill dialog box appears, set the use option at the top to black, then click OK to close out of the dialog box. This fills the selections with black, although it may be hard to see with the guides and selection outlines in the way. So go up to the select menu at the top of the screen and choose deselect, which will remove the selection outlines. Then, to turn off the guides, go up to the view menu, choose show, and then choose guides. At first, you'll see a check mark to the left of the word guides which tells us the guides are currently visible. Clicking guides will remove the check mark and turn the guides off. With the selection outlines and guides removed, we can see our black grid on the grid layer. Now. I'll open the photo to which I'll be using the grid effect. If you're using Photoshop CS3 or earlier versions, the photo will automatically open in its own floating document window. If you're using Photoshop versions CS4 and above, depending on how you have things set up in Photoshop's preferences, the photo may open in a tabbed document. In my case, 
The new image document opens in a new tab as I'm in Photoshop CS6. Select the Move tool from the Tools bar and simply drag the image to the first tab where we created the grid. Drag the imported image layer between the background and the grid layers within the Layers panel. Now, activate the Show Transformation controls in the Options bar and zoom out the document until you see the entire transformation box. Using the transformation control handles, adjust the main subject to fit within the canvas and adjust as needed. In here, I just focus on the main subject. That is Jessica's face. Then we have to click on the grid layer in the layers panel to activate it. In the tools bar, click and hold the quick selection tool to bring up the magnetic wand tool. With it, I'm going to click on the top left square and then change to add new selection in the option bar by clicking this icon or just hold on the shift key while doing multiple selections. and then few more squares on the boundaries apart from her face. Hold Ctrl or Command and click on the new layer icon in the layers panel which creates a new blank layer below the grid layer. Go up to the edit menu at the top of the screen and once again choose the fill command. This time, when the fill dialog box appears, change the use option to white. Click OK when you're done. Deselect the squares by going up to the select menu and choosing deselect, or simply press Ctrl and D or Command and D to deselect them with the keyboard shortcut. Let's colorize more squares. First, we need to have the grid layer active in the layers panel, so click on it to select it. Remember, you always need the grid layer selected before you can select any squares. Now with the Add to Selection option selected, click inside each square to select them. Activate the Photos layer, here it is layer 1 in the Layers panel. Click on the new Adjustment layer icon at the bottom of the Layers panel and click Hue Saturation. If you're using Photoshop versions CS4 or above, the controls and options for the Hue Saturation Adjustment layer will appear inside the Adjustments panel. In CS3 and older versions, a separate Hue Saturation dialog box will open. First, select the Colorize option by clicking inside its checkbox. To increase the color's saturation, drag the saturation slider towards the right. I'm going to set my saturation value to 50. For these squares, I'm going to leave the hue slider set all the way to the left in its default position which selects red. Of course, you can choose whichever color you like. Then, choose the color you want to colorize the selected squares with by dragging the hue slider. Keep an eye on your document as you drag the sliders to preview the results. For Photoshop CS3 and earlier users, click OK when you're done to close out of the dialog box. If we look in the Layers panel, we see the Adjustment layer sitting directly above the Photo layer, make sure it's selected and highlighted in blue, then go up to the Blend Mode option at the top of the Layers panel and change its Blend Mode from Normal to Color. This makes sure we're changing only the colors in the image, not the brightness values. Here's my document after colorizing some of the squares red. Repeat the same steps and colorize more squares. First select the grid layer in the layers panel. Then click more squares with the magic wand tool. Click on the photo layer in the layers panel to select it. Then click on the new adjustment layer icon and choose Hue, Saturation. 
Select the Colorize option, then choose a color with the Hue slider and a Saturation level with the Saturation slider. Finally, change the Blend mode of the new adjustment layer to Color. You can also use a Hue, Saturation adjustment layer to completely desaturate some of the squares, leaving them black and white. To do that, select some squares, then add a Hue, Saturation adjustment layer as you normally would, but rather than choosing the color with the Hue slider, simply drag the Saturation slider all the way to the left, which will remove all the color and no need to select the Colorize option. Repeat these steps as many as you needed by adding more hue and saturation layers with different adjustments. In the next step, let's change the appearance of the grid lines themselves first by changing their color from black to white. Click on the grid layer in the layers panel to select it, then click on the lock transparent pixels icon just below the blend mode option. This will affect only the pixels themselves. It will not have any effect on the transparent areas. This way, if we fill the layer with, say, white as we're about to do, only the grid lines will be filled with white. The transparent areas on the layer will remain transparent. So go up to the edit menu and once again choose fill. When the fill dialog box appears, the use option is already set to white since that's what we set it last time, so just click OK to close out of the dialog box. Photoshop will fill the grid lines with white. I want to increase the thickness of the grid lines, so I click on the layer styles icon at the bottom of the layers panel and bring up the stroke dialog box. <music> click on the color swatch beside the word color, which opens the color picker. Choose white from the color picker, then click OK to close out of it. With white now as the stroke color. Leave the position set to outside and adjust the width of the stroke by entering the size or dragging slider while keeping an eye on the document to judge the result. I'm going to set my stroke size to 2 pixels. And at last we have our final image. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.